This is a portable laser projector that you could use virtually anywhere you have Wi-Fi. In this review, I will discuss the design of this projector. I'll talk about my experiences setting it up, using it in my actual home where I don't have a TV. Starting to think maybe I need to get myself a projector. I also used it in my Airbnb suite. And of course, this is meant for outdoor use as well. So I did use it outdoors as well. So without further ado, you know how we do here at Handy Andy Media. Folks, sit back, relax, get your popcorn ready. And cue the intro. So let's begin with the design. You can just look at this projector. You see that it has that cube-like kind of design. On the top is where you have the 5-watt Yamaha built-in Bluetooth speakers. And when I say Bluetooth speakers, that means when you're not using it as a projector, you can use this as a Bluetooth speaker. Kind of ingenious. I don't know why they didn't think of this before. The actual projector lens is on the bottom and it seems to be in a weird spot, kind of too low. But there is this little kickstand that you can, you know, push up through this little gray button that actually will elevate it so that when it hits the wall, you can get it to the right angle that you want. The thing about this projector is that it doesn't have optical zoom. So you're not going to be sitting there dialing and trying to zoom in the focus. What it does is it does it automatically, and that's where you kind of see this panel here on the front. It determines where the wall is. It does the auto keystone, auto focus, all by itself internally. So it's really just kind of like plug, you know, throw it against the wall and play. This is a long throw projector. You know, they have short throw projectors. They have these new ultra short throw projectors, which you can see on my video channel of a review of that, a 4K one, which is pretty damn impressive and pretty freaking expensive. But this one, 1000 lumens, and it's really designed for daytime and, uh, and nighttime use. I don't know why I had a brain fart there for a second. Now, let's talk a little bit about the setup. This actually has Android TV built in, so you don't need an external you know, dongle to put on here like other projectors. BenQ, I'm talking about you. You guys include the dongle with the projector and then you have to like you use one of your HDMI ports. Like seriously, why don't you just push it in and just build it in like they did over here? So Android TV is fully built in. If you have a Google phone or not, you just basically have to use the Google app. You set up a new device, connect it to your Wi-Fi. It'll connect to your Google account. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom you're gonna be up and running in less than five minutes and all your favorite YouTube videos will be available for you to watch. Or in my case, lots of boxing clips. I've been watching a lot of boxing during the past two years and this was a, was a tough to review without watching some boxing clips, I must say. So, like I mentioned, I set this up just in my living room. I was watching some clips, testing it out once I had it set up and I was pretty impressed with the quality, especially that it was daytime. It was it was pretty bright, you know, projectors historically have not had a good reputation during daytime use, but they are getting much, much better. I have to say that. Now let's talk about using this because I actually tested this inside my Airbnb suite, which if you know, has a built-in projector. It's actually another Epson projector, the 1060, the home cinema 1060, which is mounted right onto the ceiling and then projects onto the wall. So I just use that wall with this projector. And because this, you know, doesn't have the auto or has auto focus, so you don't have to dial or anything like that or no optical zoom. You basically I had to put it on a table, a coffee table and move it back and forth to kind of uh, assess the different sizes. It can do up to 150 inches, which is pretty impressive because the current projector that I have on that screen, if I remember correctly, it's 164 inches. So almost that entire wall, I was able to get a screen with this portable projector. However, and here's the big however, the farther back you go, the less bright it is. And this is very noticeable during the daytime use. As soon as you push it back, it's not as bright. But then you push it forward, get a smaller screen, you get more brightness. Surprise, surprise. So the question is like, where's the ultimate, you know, 
best bang for your buck in terms of size and brightness, I'm going to say around 100 inches, maybe say 90 to 110 inches. Somewhere that's where the sweet spot is. It's still bright and it's still big. At 150 inches in the daytime, I don't know. It just wasn't, it wasn't that bright. Um, but if it's nighttime, you know, you can push this back and I think you'll be very happy getting that 1080p display uh, up to 150 inches with the brightness that it has at nighttime. Now, the next question was, <laughs> this was an issue I had a lot indoors and not only that outdoors, but I was trying to fix it indoors. It automatically kind of determines the the image onto the wall. It's got the sensors that, that do that automatically. However, it just seemed like the image was on an angle. And I'm one of those guys who likes everything perfectly straight. You know, when I put a shelf up, it has to be straight. I use a level. If it's off by a little bit, I can see it. I can't unsee it. And in this case, I couldn't unsee the fact that it was on a little bit of an angle. So then I'm trying to like fix it, you know, and prop it over like this and that. And I wish that they had some kind of legs that were adjustable. These ones are just minor. It's like little tiny screws. But if it could just like, you could just angle it because for some reason, I don't know why, but I just felt like I just needed to keep moving it around to try to get that image to be perfectly straight because it's hard for me to watch something when I see it on an angle. It's just, it's like OCD or something, man. It just drives me nuts. So... What I did is I ended up using little uh, drink coasters or beer coasters to try to prop the image up. Uh, I would like to see the legs kind of be adjusted on the back. Now let's talk about using this outside. Now I'm a lucky guy because my next door neighbor built a projector screen in his backyard so he could watch um, movies outside. It's kind of my advice. I gave him the idea uh, a long time ago and he actually took my advice and it's amazing and I'm kind of kind of jealous of, of his projector screen but it's right there so what did I do I went over next door and I tested this out on his projector screen and I have to say it was again very very impressive now this is not something you got high noon in the summertime that you're gonna be watching TV but during the evening time as the Sun's going down say you have kids you want to entertain them keep them outside maybe you try to clean the inside or you just want them to stay outside off their computers and their phones um, you can get a fantastic image. And with these speakers, all in all, it was a very good cinematic experience. It's like a little entertainment box. It's just like plug and play. Just connect to your Wi-Fi and you're good to go. So I really, really did enjoy. But the same thing, the farther you push it back, the less bright the image is. Um, and then you try to want to get that sweet spot, which I felt was about 100 inches. But, you know, kids aren't that picky. You think just grab this and put it against the wall, turn it on and watch their shows. So this is where this projector is kind of special because it's got that versatility. You could use it indoors. Maybe instead of a TV, you have this, this is pointing in the wall like I had in my situation in my home. You could then say in the summertime, just grab it and push it outside. Say you're going to a party and you want to show photos or you just want to show artwork or something onto the wall. You can take this with you as well. So it's got that versatility. The only thing that I would like to see in terms of improvements uh, outside of the whole angling and trying to get it all straight is they have a sleep timer mode that will automatically turn this thing off. Now, I'm the type of person that falls asleep watching shows all the time. And I would like to be able to use a sleep timer via voice assistant because this does have Google voice assistant, but you can't activate this, the sleep timer through that. So if they could do that, that would be a great feature because currently you have to go to the settings to turn it on. And me, I always think I'm not going to fall asleep, but I'm going to. So if I was starting to doze off, I could just grab the controller and tell Google to, uh, you know, set the, uh, the sleep timer on so that this thing is not on while I'm passed out and that will waste the bulb, the life of the bulb, which I believe is about 20,000 hours for this projector. So if they can make that improvement, I think I would be happy. But this is the future of projectors, folks. Portable projectors, these things that you can take with you anywhere. They're great for parties. They're just great for your old general home entertainment. It kind of, I'm starting to think it could replace a TV. I was actually thinking of giving my mom one of these for her, her room because her and my dad, they only have the one TV and my dad will watch a lot of TV. And so maybe I can give her this. 
and then she could watch something in a different room rather than get her a conventional television, um, which I don't think she really wants anyways. But something like this, it's just versatile that she could use when she wants to. Anyways, folks, I hope you like this review of the Epson EP EF12, the EpiVision Mini EF12. If you did, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave your comments below. If you want to get more information about your boy, hit me up on my website, handyandymedia.com. Just make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm posting videos all the time. And if you leave a comment, I promise I will respond to it. Once again, Andy Barrar, Handy Andy from Handy Andy Media. See you again next time. Bye for now.